Good day, students. Uh, today we are having lecture number 10. Uh, this lecture uh, must be tomorrow on the 18th of February. But I uh, say to you about change of time and uh, date of our lecture last week. This uh, lecture will be saved, uh, um, will be uploaded on the portal. I will, I will upload a recording of this lecture, that's why uh, it's okay if you hear, if you will hear, if you watch this uh, recording later. Today uh, we are having lecture number 10. Today we are talking about pathogens of zoonotic infections. Uh, these are such diseases as plague and anthrax and we also will talk about brucellosis and tularemia. The first pathogen, the per first pathogen that we discuss uh, is Yersinia pestis. Uh, firstly, we should talk about biological properties of Yersinia pestis. You know that we start to discuss biological properties from its uh, scientific name. So, uh, Yersinia pestis belongs to family Enterobacteriaceae. I want to remind you that entero means uh, intestinal bacteria that uh, live in digestive system and cause infections there. It can be normal microflora or pathogenic microorganisms. Uh, you remember that all these bacteria are gram-negative rod-shaped bacteria, I said about it. We studied Escherichia, uh, Klebsiella, Proteus, Shigella and Salmonella. Genera is Yersinia. Yersinia was uh, named in honor of a uh, scientist, of bacteriologist who discovered it. it uh, he was Alexander Yersin. Uh, he discovered in, um, he isolated this bacteria in Hong Kong um, in 1894. And um, today we are talking about special Yersinia pestis. This bacteria causes plague. Uh, students, um, this week um, at our practical classes I understood that you don't understand questions when I ask you when I ask what is name of bacteria you must tell name of bacteria you must say it your pestis. when I ask which disease is caused by this bacteria you should call this one it's plague please don't be confused don't be mistaken a name of bacteria and name of disease Uh, plague. It is uh, one of the oldest disease that we um, had been known from early years. Bubonic plague caused by Yersinia pestis is an ancient disease that has killed millions of people over the centuries. And uh, this disease, this disease is called and was called black death because the skin of uh, patients becomes dark, becomes black. Uh, we will talk about pathogenesis, you will see pictures. Another epidemic uh, in the 14th century killed one fourth of the European populations, more than 25% of all people in Europe. In, 19, uh, in 1893, an epidemic began in Hong Kong and spread to India, where more than 10 million individuals died over a 20-year period. So their mm, bacteria was isolated and studied. What about morphology? Yersinia are ovoid-shaped or oval-shaped, um, rod-shaped bacteria. Um, but they are smaller than other Enterobacteriaceae. They are smaller than 
is cherichia. They are also gram-negative, as other enterobacteriaceae. They are non-motile and non-sporing. They produce slime layer or capsule on its surface. And we may use a special staining technique. It is uh, staining with metering blue. That's why we can see a bipolar staining. We can see dark ends in bacterial cell because of metering blue staining. We talk about special staining because it's differential technique, differential staining for uh, your senia that allows to differentiate it from other enterobacteria cell. When you fill your tables, don't forget to uh, write in special staining methylene blue. Don't write it. Don't forget to write it. What about cultivation or cultural properties? Uh, your pestis uh, is a facultative anaerobe as other enterobacteria say. It also can grow in simple media like meat, pipped and agar as other enterobacteria say. And we may use special media that is blood agar and maconchi agar. Maconchi agar is also used for some enterobacteria say. Eosinia produce gray and viscose colonies, and there are spherical colonies on the surface of agar. Uh, there are some uh, fermentative properties that are used in their identification. Eosinia destroy erbinols, produce hydrogen sulfide, don't ferment urea, and don't ferment lactose. Don't ferment lactose. So, uh, Colonies are colorless and color of the medium, like on endomedium, color of the medium is not changed, not changed. What about antigens? Eurocenia um, has specific antigens, specific antigens, it's F1 protein that inhibits phagocytosis. So phagocytes are not able to engulf the pathogen to um, <coughs> destroy it. Uh, v and W proteins also inhibit phagocytosis. They are present in cell wall and all tissue that is lipopolysaccharide of cell wall of gram negative bacteria. There are some virulence factors they take part that take part in pathogenesis. The first one is capsule or slime layer that also um, has antiphagocytic function for to inhibit phagocytosis and the toxin because it is gram negative exotoxin that is also called murine toxin because it caused death of mice uh, fibrinolysine from the name of this virulence factor we may understand it causes lysis of fibrin clots you know that fibrin is the main, uh, is a important protein of our uh, blood, and it is uh, it takes part in clotting. Uh, it uh, promotes uh, formation of clots in the in our blood. That's why if there are some uh, bleedings, destruction of blood vessels. Fibrin clothes stop this, block these bleedings, but fibrinolysine destroy fibrin clothes, so uh, bleedings are not stopped and mm, they uh, they are stimulated. Bleedings, multiple bleedings in uh, organs are stimulated by uh, fibrinolysine. Hemolysine destroy red blood cells. And VNW proteins inhibit phagocytosis. I have just said about it uh, when I told about antigens. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of plague. Uh, the source of infections are wild rodents. Uh, wild rodents uh, in contact with men. These are house rats, silver rats that uh, live. Uh, next to homes, next to houses, and sick men. So, sources are wild rodents and 
home rodents we can call it m sick man transmission is a direct contact from one from sick man to healthy man transmissible through bites of flares I hope you know what are these insects flares foodborne when food is infected uh, uh, by uh, urine or feces of rodents or airborne through inhalation so here here we can see almost all transmission ways uh, except sexual transmission uh, if uh, Yersinia pestis, is, if plague is transmitted by bites of flares, by transmissible, we should uh, uh, say about vectors. Vectors are insects that transfer bacteria from uh, animal, from rodent to human. So vectors are flares. Flares are not source of infection. Source of infection are those uh, live organisms like human and animals that are also sick the organs are also infected and destroyed and they have uh, clinical symptoms flares flares are not uh, infected by ersinipetis they just transfer Th their organs are not destroyed they don't have this infection they just transfer because when they bite uh, droplets of drops of, of blood consists of large number of Yersinia. In pathogenesis of plague we uh, talk about clinical forms, about some clinical forms of plague. The first one is cutaneous plague, the second one is bubonic plague, the third one is pneumonic plague and the fourth one is septicemic plague. Appearance or occurrence of these clinical forms, occurrence of every clinical form, depends on mm, transmission way. For example, uh, cutaneous plague uh, develops after direct transmission, after direct contact with infected person. Pneumonic plague uh, develops after inhalation after airborne septicemic plague uh, develops after uh, transmissible uh, transmission transmissible transmission so let's talk about every uh, clinical form cutaneous plague is uh, characterized by ulcers ulcers appear at the site of penetration where bacteria enters the human organism uh, cutaneous plague uh, usually <clears throat> occur, occurs after uh, direct transmission of the pathogen then dissemination in the blood results in hemorrhages hemorrhages or bleedings and bruising of skin hemorrhages so we can see rashes uh, you can see in this uh, diagram, in this picture, rashes because of hemorrhages. I have just said you about fibrinolysin. Fibrinolysin is an uh, enzyme, aggressive enzyme that is produced by bacteria and it uh, blocks um, formation of clotting. When there are some bleedings in our organism, uh, fibrin form clots fibrin clots that stop bleeding but here it is absent it is block blocked in severe infection in severe infection there is a gangrene of fingers or extremities because of destruction of full destruction of blood vessels and multiple hemorrhages and that's why this uh, disease is called black death I hope you understand that uh, gangrene uh, results, gangrene uh, is caused by necrosis, necrosis is caused by ischemia, ischemia is absence of oxygen in tissues.
when black weasels are destroyed. Bubonic plague is uh, another one. Is another one. Uh, is another clinical form. Bubonic plague results from the bite of an infected flea or by exposure of open wounds. Uh, when <clears throat> bacteria enter directly uh, in lymphatic system or uh, through open wounds or some cuttings in the skin. Bubonic plague, bubonic plague um, is characterized by bubos, bubos. That's why it is called bubonic plague. Bubo develops in lymph nodes. Lymph nodes near the site of exposure become swollen and extremely painful. So they are called bubos. Bubos are uh, enlarged and uh, painful lymph nodes where bacteria multiply. Bubos develop in the groin area and lymph nodes in the armpits and neck. Actually in the site of infection or next to the site of infection. The third uh, clinical form of uh, plague is a pneumonic plague. Pneumonic plague develops after contamination by inhaling bacteria from sick men or animals. Incubation period is between from one up to three days and uh, firstly a uh, patient is characterized by flu-like illness, flu-like symptoms that then progress to pneumonia with coughing, chest pain and bloody sputum. Bloody sputum occurs because of destruction of blood vessels. Pneumonic plague has a higher mortality rate. A lot of patients die due to respiratory failure and shock. This uh, clinical form develops faster than others. Septicemic plague is the last one. It results when bacteria are transmitted directly into the bloodstream after biting of uh, insects, after biting of fleas. Patients have swollen lymph nodes, so there are no bubos. Bacteria cause formation of blood clots, then uh, it cause uh, it leads to cell and tissue death and gangrene. Gangrene of extremities may develop. Look at this diagram, you can see gangrene. What about diagnosis? Firstly, diagnosis of plague is carried out just in special laboratories and anti-plague protective clothing. Uh, there are special laboratories that work with uh, zoonotic infections. Uh, these are high-risk laboratories. Which specimen may be collected for diagnosis? The choice of specimen depends on uh, the type of the clinical forms of plague. In a bubonic plague, we collect bubo content from lymph nodes. In cutaneous plague, we should collect ulcer secretions. In pneumonic plague, when bacteria um, are present in the lungs, so we should collect, we can collect mucus from the pharynx because they adhere it in pharynx, uh, in uh, um, lower parts of pharynx and sputum. Blood, blood sorry, is collected in uh, septicemic plague and necrosis material um, also can be collected. It includes organs, lungs, uh, tissues, contents of lymph nodes from uh, diet patients, from patients who die from after um, plague, rodents, fleas, foodstuff. Uh, if we look at this uh, map, we can see spreading of plague in all countries among uh, in all countries of the world. Uh, for example, for example, the most number of patients with plague are indicated in Madagascar. 
this number uh, means number of patients uh, this is number of died this is number of infected patients this is number of died in Congo it's also present in large amount in other countries in other countries <coughs> uh, Uganda Bolivia Peru United States China Mongolia Kyrgyzstan and Russia these are just uh, single cases single cases because of um, massive control massive control uh, under the rodents under the wild rodents they are controlled all uh, wild rodents are controlled for the presence uh, yersinia plague in their population such uh, animals wild rodents are captured by scientists by lab workers then they collect blood from rodents and uh, they detect the presence or absence of yersinia pestis what about diagnosis methods uh, the first one is microscopic it includes gram staining or methylene blue staining the second one is bacteriological that includes inoculation of uh, specimen on blood agar or macomb agar biological method includes inoculation of animals with a bubo content or, or other specimen and then we can see a development of uh, plague in these animals serological tests include using of agglutination test and ELISA we also can use skin allergic test it's intracutaneous injection with pestin pestin it's a mixture of toxin with bacterial cells and PCR polymerase chain reaction once more microbiological diagnosis of plague is not done in usual clinical laboratories in usual bacteriological laboratories it must be done uh, just in special laboratories that work with uh, very contagious contagious very harmful dangerous bacteria treatment and prophylaxis immunity after plague is lifelong for prophylaxis of plague we can uh, use such antibiotics as streptomycin tetracycline uh, and uh, we can inject anti-plague serum in patients that consist antibodies or immunoglobulins for prophylaxis we can use killed vaccine or live ev vaccine ev uh, means uh, name of the strain that is used for preparation of this vaccine all people are not vaccinated by this vaccine this vaccine is used to vaccinate people who uh, live in regions with plague it is so called uh, epidemiological vaccination the another pathogen the another pathogen that we talk uh, about today is francisella biological properties of francisella tularensis uh, there is no uh, family family is not uh, identified for this pathogen genera francisella uh, it was uh, <coughs> named in honor of edward francis who studied this pathogen actually francisella uh, was isolated by mccoy but McCoy, Dr. McCoy, but he called it, uh, this pathogen Bacterium tularensis. Then uh, Edward Francis uh, understood and he proved he proved uh, that this pathogen caused tularemia, so it was uh, named. This bacteria got another name. It was called Francisella. Uh, special francisella tularensis so tularensis was named because of place where it was isolated it was isolated in tulare um, county in california there are some subspecies of francisella tularensis francisella tularensis tularensis it's type a francisella tularensis holarctica type b and francisella mediasiatica uh, is the last one they are distinguished in their uh, spreading in the world 
Where is a cause infection? Near the Asiatic, a cause infection is in Asian countries, for example, Holarctica in other countries. Morphology. Uh, Francisella are a short, cockle shaped or rod like cochi. This its shape is between cochi or rods. They are non-motile, they are gram-negative, non-spore forming, and sometimes surrounded by a capsule. In this diagram, Francis cells are present here. Uh, they are intracellular parasites. They often live inside the cells. They are obligate aerobes. I hope you remember what is it. These are bacteria that need oxygen for the growth. This pathogen doesn't grow on simple media. It requires cysteine for growth. Cysteine is amino acid, amino acid that is present in uh, such <coughs> substances. It's in such food stuff as uh, milk, for example, or uh, eggs in large amount. So special medium is yolk medium yolk medium that consists of yolk and sodium chloride it uh, consists of cysteine cysteine for growth of francisella fermentative properties that are used for the identification includes positive hydrogen sulfide test uh, negative indole test they this pathogen ferments with glucose mannose and maltose with acid formation What about antigens? It consists of all antigen that is somatic, it is lipopolysaccharide, virulent or vi antigen that is protein, and K antigen that is uh, in capsule it's polysaccharide. Among viral factors, we can say about endotoxin because a Francisella is gram negative bacteria, and vi antigen is also considered as a virulence factor because it suppresses, it inhibits phagocytosis. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of tularemia. Uh, the source of infection are sick wild animals. People are not the source of infection. Human sick men and bacterial carriers are not uh, source of infection. Which wild animals? These are rabbits, deer, wild rodents. Uh, firstly, um, tularemia uh, was identified in Tularia. Tularia was a region with a large amount of forests, forests, and it was identified in people who lived near the forest. Transmission is a transmissible way by biting of ticks. In plague, it is biting of Yes, here it's biting of ticks, ticks that bite animals and then bite human. Direct contact with infected animal tissue, for example, hunters. If hunter um, uh, kill infected animal, so uh, this hunter may be infected also if he contact contacts with it and airborne airborne uh, transmission it's in, through inhalation of aerosols uh, for example through inhalation from animals and foodborne ingestion of contaminated food like meat from these animals uh, or water because water can be contaminated by urine in pathogenesis of uh, tularemia, there are also some clinical case, uh, clinical forms of tularemia, and clinical forms depend on the transmission way. The first one, the first one is ulceroglandular tularemia. Bacteria enter through skin abrasions and cause ulcerating pepper. Regional lymph nodes enlarge and may become necrotic. Ulcer and gland. So it causes ulceration, formation of ulcers. 
and enlargement of a lymph nodes glandular. So it develops uh, through uh, direct contact when bacteria enter through skin coatings or abrasions. The another one is a glandular tolevimia, glandular tolevimia, when lymphadenopathy develops, but there are no ulcers, just enlargement of lymph nodes. Oropharyngeal tolevimia uh, occurs after ingestion of bacteria. Oropharyngeal tolevimia. Pneumonic tolevimia uh, develops through inhalation of infective aerosol that results in peribronchial inflammation. Ocular glandular tolevimia develops uh, uh, because of direct contamination of the eyes by contaminated fingers. Ocular. And typhoidal tolerimia typhoidal. Uh, it is a septicemia with fever, malaise, headache, and pain in the involved region. I remind you that septicemia or um, uh, sepsis is a multiplication of bacteria in the bloodstream. When bacteria uh, enter the bloodstream directly after biting of ticks, for example. In this diagram, in this photo, you can see glandular tularemia, glandular, uh, that is characterized, characterized by enlargement of lymph nodes, lymph nodes, but without any ulcers. And this is ulcer glandular tularemia. It's uh, enlargement of lymph nodes with formation of ulcers there in the site of infection. Uh, microbiological diagnosis, treatment, and prophylaxis of tularemia. The choice of specimen also depends on the type, on the clinical form of infection. We can call it lymph node aspirates or lymph node content in uh, glandular or um, ulcer glandular tularemia, local lesions in ulcer glandular tularemia, bone marrow, blood, deep tissues, ulcer biopsy or tissues. Uh, in pneumonic, for example, uh, we can collect uh, sputum. All suspected samples should be labeled high risk. Diagnosis of tularemia also is also done just in special laboratories that work with uh, very contagious microorganisms. Methods that are used for their diagnosis are the same two in uh, are similar to uh, plague. The first one is microscopic that includes preparation of smears and its gram scaling. The second one is bacteriological that includes inoculation of specimen on nutrient medium. Serological tests include lymph precipitation test and agglutination test. Uh, in diagnosis of tularemia, we also can use skin allergic test. It includes intracutaneous injection of tularin. Tularin is um, <coughs> a toxin of bacteria with uh, bac components of bacterial cells. In positive case, in positive case. Uh, there is a purple, purple that develops in the site of injection. It's similar to uh, uh, skin allergic test in tuberculosis or leprosy. Biological test. Biological test includes inoculation of specimen into guinea pigs. Guinea pigs develop disease during short period. Uh, we can see uh, different clinical forms, glandular or oclo-glandular, we can isolate bacteria from the blood and we can identify, we can say that it's francisella. Prophylaxis include injection of vaccine. Live vaccine is used for those people who live in regions where uh, tularemia um, is present or for those people who work uh, in forests uh, whose profession uh, need to be vaccinated, like hunters, for example. There are hunters, uh, if it is uh, his, their work, so they must be vaccinated. 
For treatment of it, I should use streptomycin and doxycycline. The another pathogen, another pathogen uh, is brucella. Family brucella say genera brucella. Uh, Latin name of this bacteria was given in honor of David Bruce, who isolated this pathogen. And there are some species, for example, Brucella melitensis, Brucella abortus, Brucella suris. Brucella is a causative agent of brucellosis. So, Latin name of bacteria Brucella melitensis, Brucella abortus, Brucella suris. And name of disease is brucellosis. Brucellosis. Uh, brucellosis is a primarily primarily uh, disease of animals. Which animals? Of cattle, cows, for example. Then uh, goats, sheep, uh, pigs. But then this pathogen uh, was. Uh, able to infect human. Brucella militensis is the most viral strain, is the most viral species. Brucella abortus is the less virulent. Uh, primarily Brucella abortus cause uh, infections uh, in cattle, in cows, for example, uh, and it uh, if animal is infected by Brucella abortus uh, when cow is pregnancy, so it causes abortion in animals. Brucella suis infect pigs, Brucella militensis infect uh, goat and sheep. Goats and sheep. Morphology. Yeah, these are small ovoid shaped bacteria. They are gram negative, non motile, non sporing, and non capsulated. You can see this bacteria in this diagram. Gram negative and small. They are very small. They are smaller than Enterobacteria or than Yersinia. These bacteria are obligate or strict aerobes. We have said about Francisella that is obligate aerobe, and this one is also obligate aerobe. These bacteria also can't grow on simple media. It needs special media with uh, adding of liver extracts. For example, it is the special media is liver extract agar and liver extract broth. Uh, bacteria grow very, very slowly over a period of from 8 up to 15 days. So its bacteriological diagnosis takes more days than in other pathogen. After the growth, after during cultivation, bacteria produce round round smooth colonies like here uh, fermentative properties that are used for their identification includes negative indole test positive hydrogen sulfide test positive urea test and this bacteria don't ferment any carbohydrates uh, it allows to differentiate this pathogen from enterobacteria say uh, Brucella has A and M antigens that are present in cell wall. Among virulence factors, so we can um, discuss, we can uh, say about endotoxin, because it is a gram-negative bacteria that is lipoprosecariot of cell wall, and hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is enzyme that uh, destroys it, splits hyaluronic acid, and um, provide um, spreading of bacteria, dissemination of bacteria in human organism. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of brucellosis. Source of infection are only sick animals, just sick animals. Which animals? These are farm animals, goats and sheep, cattle like cows, pigs. This disease is not transmitted from human. Uh, maybe there were some cases, but they are not known for uh, science. 
So uh, the target patients for brucellosis are those people who work with animals, who take care of animals. These are vets, vet doctors or farmers. Transmission of brucellosis includes some transmission risks. The first one is a foodborne transmission that uh, in, means ingestion of infected milk. Uh, airborne transmission through inhalation of droplets with brucella uh, and direct contact with infected tissues of animals. The first one, the first one is foodborne transmission through ingestion of uh, infected milk is the most known, is the most often the most frequent transmission way. Um, most patients, most patients are infected through uh, unpasteurized milk. You know, you know that uh, milk, milk from cow must be boiled, must be boiled because cow, cows can be the source of many infections, salmonellosis or brucellosis. That's why uh, milk must be boiled, boiled several times to destroy pathogenic bacteria there. Those people who uh, drink unpasteurized or unboiled milk are uh, in risk group for brucellosis. Pathogenesis of brucellosis. After exposure, after exposure, by inhalation or by drinking of uh, milk, infected milk, bacteria are engulfed by macrophages and monocytes. Bacteria survive and replicate in phagocytes. They are also parasites. Parasites, they can live inside the cell. And you remember macrophages live in the tissues, monocytes live uh, present in the bloodstream. Then bacteria are carried or transferred to the spleen, liver, bone marrow, lymph nodes and kidneys in all, almost all internal organs, especially parenchymatous organs. Their bacteria, their bacteria produce proteins that induce granuloma formation in these organs and destructive changes in this and other tissues. So firstly, macrophages and monocytes, they replicate there, multiply then internal organs where they cause formation of granulomas that results in destructive changes. There are three main clinical forms that are were uh, seen in patients. The first one is a latent infection where there are no any clinical symptoms. Patient doesn't know about his or her disease. The second one is undulant fever. Undulant fever uh, means acute infection. It's periodic fever over months or years. Um, brucellosis is also called a Malta fever because it was uh, discovered in Malta country. There is such country as Malta. Uh, and the last one, the last one is chronic brucellosis, is one of the most dangerous that lasts uh, several years, uh, more than five, six, or even more than ten years. A disease persists six more months or more. And complications include arthritis, spondylitis. Arthritis is inflammation of joints. Spondylitis is inflammation of spine. Now, neurological signs and internal abscesses. Actually, chronic brucellosis is very um, uh, serious disease. is a very serious clinical form. And I know such patients who live with chronic brucellosis, the life is really very, very terrible because uh, they always feel um, terrible pain in uh, joints, in head, and uh, uh, there was uh, one famous Russian actress, actress um, who um, wanted and who died uh, 
the she made a suicide suicide because of a terrible pain in her head she uh, was infected by brucellosis she had uh, chronic brucellosis during long period during more than 10 years and she couldn't uh, to have it that's why she uh, made a suicide microbiological diagnosis treatment and prophylaxis of brucellosis specimen includes blood collection bone marrow if it is possible liver urine lymph nodes serum milk and other dairy products and microbes are isolated also in special laboratories with label high risk methods include microscopic examination preparation of smear and gram staining bacteriological it's, um, inclusion on nutrient media serological tests that includes agglutination test complement fixation test and ELISA enzyme linked immunosorbental cell biological method includes inoculation of specimen into uh, animals here in brucellosis for diagnosis of brucellosis we should take healthy guinea pigs or white mice that are injected with specimen a month later, the guinea pig's blood is tested for antibodies. Antibodies are detected by serological tests, complement fixation or ELISA. Skin allergic test is also used. Uh, we uh, should take brucellin, it's filtrate of a three-fourth week old brose culture. It consists of uh, toxin of brucella and components of cell wall. Uh, destroyed cell wall. Brucellin is injected intracutaneously into the forearm and the test is considered as a positive if there is a painful uh, red swelling in the site of injection uh, four, from 4 up to 6 cm in size. Uh, polymerase chain reaction is also used uh, for treatment for treatment we can use tetracycline, streptomycin and rifampicin. Prophylaxis includes injection of vaccine. It is li live automated vaccine for people and cattle. And the last pathogen, the last pathogen that we discussed, it is anthrax, causative agent of anthrax. Family is Bacillaceae genera bacillus and species bacillus anthracis it is the causative agent of anthrax morphology these are rod shaped uh, bacteria with square ends now let's come back in our mind to the first lecture to the previous semester i understand that it is impossible and most of you most of you don't remember which shapes of bacteria do you remember shapes of bacteria these are spherical shaped rod shaped and spiral shaped bacteria in rod shaped bacteria there are bacteria bacilla and clostridia so ba bacilla this bacteria is called bacillus because it is rod shaped uh, bacteria that produce spores and diameter of spore Diameter of spore is not bigger than diameter of bacterial cell. So this is rod-shaped bacteria with square ends. And uh, it is very often when uh, this uh, bacilla, bacilla occur in chains. Uh, you remember streptococcus are spherical bacteria that occur in chains. But bacilla also form chains in smears. Uh, spores are located in the center of the bacilla. In the center, we can't see it without special staining. This bacteria is non-motile and it has protein capsule. I, uh, protein capsule, this property is highlighted. Why? Because most bacteria have polysaccharide capsule. Polysaccharide capsule unlike bacillus that produce protein capsule it's the only bacteria that produce protein capsule special staining is used uh, 
gene sustained from detection of protein capsule. So, this bacteria is the first one that produces spores. Cultural properties. They are facultative anaerobes. They can live in the both conditions in presence or absence of oxygen. They grow on all simple media. They also can be cultivated on special media like blood agar. And colonies are very, very specific for this bacteria. Colonies resemble locks of matted hair or uh, sometimes it is so-called medusa head appearance, like a medusa head. Fermentative properties include uh, such ones as fermentation of glucose, maltose and sucrose with, sucrose with acid production and a positive hydrogen sulfide test. Antigenic structure. Uh, there are several antigens in Bacillus anthracis. The first one is a capsular antigen that is protein. The second one is cell wall antigen, that is polysaccharide. The third one is somatic antigen, that is protein of cell wall. A protective antigen that has little and edema action. Protective antigen is uh, called protective because um, of its action. In experiment, um, scientists took uh, some small amount of protective antigen, a small amount of bacteria with protective antigen and injected into animals, into white mice. White mice uh, didn't die and uh, then, then scientists uh, took more amount of bacteria and they injected once more in this mice and this mice um, must be die but they didn't die. What happened? When uh, scientists inject protective antigen the first time, at the first time, this protective antigen stimulated production of specific protective antibodies. Protective antibodies that protect against this pathogen. And then scientists uh, injected bacteria, injected Bacillus anthracis in large amount, in uh, high, uh, very high virulent that um, could cause disease or that could cause the death of the mice, but mice were alive because they had antibodies, protective antibodies. It's about protective antigen. Virulence factors. Mm, Bacillus anthracis has a capsule, protein capsule, and produce some toxins. The first toxin is exotoxin that uh, has uh, edemic action called edema, and lethal toxin that is also called mouse factor causes pulmonary edema and death in rats and cytolytic for macrophages cause destruction. Destru de uh, Disruption of macrophages. Endotoxin is not produced because it is gram positive. Epidemiology and pathogenesis of anthrax. The source of infection are sick animals. People are not the source of infection. Among all uh, diseases that we discussed today, just in plague. Sick human can be the source of infection. But remember that in plague uh, there are no any bacterial carriers as a source. If human is infected with a plague, it will cause disease. I remind that bacterial carriers are patients who uh, has no any clinical symptoms but can infect other persons. So in plague there are no any bacterial carriers. Uh, let's come back to anthrax. Um, the source of infection are sick animals. Which animals? Are farm animals. Cattle, sheep, mostly cattle, sheep, cows, for example. Transmission ways include direct contact with sick animals uh, 
risk group people for direct transmission are farmers who um, have these animals at home uh, at, uh, and vets who work with animals. Airborne transmission through inhalation of droplets with pathogen with Bacillus anthracis and foodborne through transmission uh, via meat and milk from sick animals. Pathogenesis of anthrax. Firstly, uh, we have said that um, uh, source of infection are animals. So, how animals are infected by Bacillus anthracis? How uh, does it happen? Infected animals discharge bacteria from the mouth, nose and rectum. This bacilli form spores in soil and survive for a long period. Long period means more than 20 or 30 years. And spores are always present in soil. Then spores enter the body, enter the in other animal, other cow, through abrasions in the oral or intestinal mucosa. You know that uh, when cow uh, eat the grass, grass may cause uh, small abrasions or coatings or small wounds in their mouth in um, mucosal membrane of throat. So spores enter the body, they uh, germinate there and multiply. And then once more uh, they discharge it from mouth, nose and rectum from animal. In human, in human, there are three clinical forms of anthrax. Uh, development or occurrence of these clinical forms depend on transmission way. The first one is cutaneous anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax uh, develops after direct transmission. Inhalation anthrax through inhalation, or it is also called respiratory anthrax, and gastrointestinal anthrax through foodborne transmission. The first one is cutaneous anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax um, is characterized by formation of papule. Spores um, of bacteria enters through skin abrasions in human, uh, germinates there germinate there and bacteria multiply there. Papal develops in the site of infection. It evolves into painless, black, severely swollen, malignant pustule, which eventually crusts over. Inhalation anthrax, or um, it is also called pulmonary anthrax, in other words, it's called a wool sorter disease because this disease um, mostly occurs in uh, people who work with uh, animals' wool. <coughs> That's why it's called wool sorter disease, who contact with wool. It's caused by inhalation of spores in the lungs, progressive, uh, it leads to progressive hemorrhagic lymphadenitis inflammation of the lymph nodes uh, there in chest, hemorrhagic mediastinitis, inflammation of the mediastinum. Uh, inhalation anthrax is very, very dangerous. It has a mortality rate approaching 100% if left untreated. If patient <coughs> don't, if patient doesn't uh, get, doesn't take antibiotics, uh, patient die. And the last one, the last clinical form here is gastrointestinal anthrax. It is characterized by, um, it occurs uh, after uh, ingestion of contaminated milk or food, ulcers form at the site of invasion in mouth or in intestine leading to regional lymphadenopathy, edema, and sepsis. I haven't said about um, inhalation anthrax. You remember that, let's come back to toxins. A little toxin, little toxin cause pulmonary edema, edema of the lungs. So here 
in inhalation. Uh, it is characterized by edema, very severe edema in the lungs. Microbiological diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis of anthrax. Laboratory diagnosis is carried out in special laboratories working with a dangerous infection. So, all diseases that we discussed today must be identified, must be diagnosed just in special laboratories with label high risk. Specimen includes a collection of fluid or pus from pastels, blood, sputum, cerebrospinal fluid or feces. The choice of specimen depends on the clinical form. In gastrointestinal, we anthrax we should collect feces. In pulmonary, it is um, sputum. In uh, um, cutaneous, it's expressions or pus from pastels on the skin. Medicines that are used are the same. It's microscopic. The first one is gram staining and gim stain for detection of protein capsule. Bacteriological method is also used for cultivation of this pathogen. It's inoculation of the specimen on yielding medium. Biological method includes inoculation of specimen into animals. White mice, guinea pigs are inoculated with the specimen. Bacillus anthracis causes the death of white mice uh, in 24-48 hours and of guinea pigs in 2-3 days following inoculation. I've said to you about a uh, mice factor or um, mouse factor that uh, cause little toxin that cause edema and in the lungs and this uh, of rats. Skin allergic test includes injection of anthracene, it's purified anthrax allergen that is injected um, intracutaneously and the result is measured after 24-48 hours. It is positive when diameter of redness and infiltrate zone is more than 16 millimeters. Serological tests include thermoprecipitin reaction. It is so-called ascolis tests. Ascolis test. It is used especially for detection of anthrax in animal wool. Thermoprecipitin reaction is used just for anthrax. Um, it is a variant. It is a type of uh, precipitation test. In precipitation test, we use um, toxin as antigen and serum as antibodies. In um, anthrax, we take wool, animals wool, we boil it and this <coughs> mixture we use as antigen and then we take uh, antibodies or serum and um, mix them to see result. If there is a precipitation ring in the uh, tube, we can see, we can say that it is anthrax. And ELISA also is used for detection of antibodies in patient's serum. Polymerase chain reaction is also used. What about treatment? Treatment uh, includes injection of anti-anthrax globulin. It is a serum with antibodies. And oh, sure, these are antibiotics. These are tetracycline penicillin, streptomycin, or ciprofloxacin. Uh, what about prophylaxis? Anthrax uh, spore vaccine is used for prophylaxis or live vaccine. Uh, vaccines are used for uh, vaccination of animals, of all animals, animals uh, on the farms and of all risk group people. I have said about them, these are farmers or wet or other people who work, who contact with uh, cattle, uh, goat, sheep, cows. They must be vaccinated. Vaccination usually um, is made through scarification. When we may make some coatings on the skin and uh, put a drop of vaccine on the skin. Um, animals also must be vaccinated. Uh, there is a, one interesting thing here. 
if animal is vaccinated and uh, this animal is vaccinated against anthrax and this animal die because of different reasons die during 10 days this animal must be burned in special places such animals are not uh, detected uh, what is the cause of the death of this animal such animals bodies of these animals must be burned and another interesting thing that I wanted to tell you it's about uh, that the greatest uh, danger of anthrax in industrial countries is the use of this pathogen as an agent of bioterrorism maybe you know from history uh, you studied history um, in fourth year that there was a period in history of russia uh, when our country was named uh, ussr uh, and uh, about 50 years ago there was a so-called cold war between united states of america between usa and ussr uh, our countries our country and usa um, they <laughs> wanted to be leader in the world in all in everything and uh, countries these countries made a biological weapon biological weapon with using of bacteria and biological weapon was used against people uh, imagine if we uh, for example use bacillus anthraxis it cause uh, in uh, inhalation cause the disease of all patients of every patient so th that's why it's really dangerous uh, in practical class in practical class uh, remind me please i will tell you about terrible case that was in our country uh, with bacillus anthraxis when our scientists tried to make a biological weapon now that's all that's all for this lecture thanks for your attention if somebody is present here I will upload uh, this lecture on the portal. I remind you that you must use, uh, that you should uh, learn lecture number nine for uh, next microbiology practice.